something greater than what you can see right now. It may seem like it's out of season, but there's a portion of scripture that's repeated in all four of the Gospels. Listen to Luke's version, the 19th chapter, the 30th and the 31st verse. In the NIV, those two verses are one. Here, from the King James, Jesus speaking to his disciples, saying, go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, whereon yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you why you loose him, thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord have need of him. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ye into the village over against you. I want you to know God still speaks to us today. Whether great or small, we, could, we should learn to obey the voice of God. Hey, Dan. It could be one of the greatest blessings that the world could ever experience from your small obedience. Let's not argue as to whether or not this is one verse or two. Let's go straight to the point. Let's see if the Holy Ghost can teach us a lesson today. Our Lord here gives clear and concise instruction. We must never forget he is all-knowing. 
when, he re when we reach tomorrow, God has already been there. God knows no limit. God knows no boundaries in power or in space. I'm talking about the everlasting God, the almighty God. Listen to Romans chapter 11, verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. The 34th verse, who, for who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him? And it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. The Apostle Paul in making this declaration about God and who he is and, 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 and some of what he can do tries to give us a hint of how great, that's what y'all say, right? How great is our God? Sing with me, how great. And he is, he's, he's just so awesome. And our minds can't understand his doings. <laughs> it, it, it really, it's come to the place in my personal life, it tickles me, some of the things we question God about. Why do you do this? I wonder if he ever tried to explain to us, wouldn't we walk away more confused than ever? He, he really wants us to get to a place where we can trust him and believe him. <laughs> I must confess that times I, it looked like he got it all wrong. But he says, don't worry, all things will work together. Excuse me, Lord, did you see what they just did to me? No sweat, I got you. It's going to work together for your good. But our great God says, I'm looking out for your best interest. I got you. He did this against you, but I'm going to let it work together. Y'all are here for your good. When we consider who our great God is, it's easier to obey his every command. Listen to how God operates. Just, just understand how he moves. In the book of Exodus chapter 23, we see something. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemy, an adversary unto thine adversary. For my angels shall go before thee. Do you, you hear what the Lord's saying? He's saying, I got you. You have to worry about enemies. I'm telling you to love everybody. And you're talking about, well, you know, here's the list of my enemies. Don't even bother. God got them. You walk in obedience to him. You show his love, his light to their darkness. He can use your light to convert them as the Holy Spirit takes that testimony, that living testimony, to work in them. Well, what about vengeance? Actually, vengeance is a weapon too great for you to handle. <laughs> It'll destroy you. Huh? Uh, 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 they, they tried to teach us how to operate certain weapons in the military. And with that bazooka that you throw up on your shoulder, they try to tell you where to stand. But you're chilling and everything else, and you stand in the wrong place, you may not be the one that's being aimed at, but you'll be cooked standing in the wrong place behind it. 
as one dear soldier almost found out in our training and just barely escaped. Because when you shoot this way with the bazooka, the 81 millimeter, it goes back that way too. And you gotta do it right. When you handle some of those heavy millimeters, they tell you how to stand, cause it'll knock you over on your bottom. And these cool people wanna stand like they saw the cowboys do, but you can't do that. That 45 got some kick in it, and it leaves nice scars right about, well anyway, and, 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 and when you don't obey, you're gonna suffer. But when you obey, it can turn out cool. Now I look like a square, but there was only two of us in the platoon that could qualify with that little weapon. I hadn't shot nothing like that, so I followed every bit of their instruction. My obedience led to my safety and my success. And when I obeyed what they said, I was rewarded for doing the right thing. Those that didn't obey and, you know, try to act like Artie Murphy. No, he's too old of a cowboy. Uh, John Wayne, John Wayne, yeah. And, and they wouldn't do like they saw him in the movies. They was blowing it left and right and walking away feeling defeated. But when out of obedience, we followed the instruction, we were victorious. So imagine what happens when we obey God. Huh? Amen. When I made my first cake, I saw how the cakes came out, and mine came out looking like that. It stayed there so long. Because once they tasted it, I don't know, they didn't come back for another slice. Um, as a matter of fact, they were warning each other and passing that one slice around saying, you better taste it first. But it looked right, but I didn't follow all the instructions. I mean, it stood up. It stood up for a long time. Like, you could have put it next to the Statue of Liberty. It might still be standing today. But, but I didn't follow the instructions. Well, you can't identify with that? I wonder how many things have occurred in your life you wish you'd obeyed somebody. We've been blessed. We've been blessed this month. We've come through the book of Proverbs. We've come. Has Proverbs spoken to anybody beside me? Huh? If we can obey these things the Holy Spirit points out to us, boy, I'm so greatly touched. My prayer, my daily prayer has changed. I'm praying for wisdom. I'm praying for understanding, huh? I, I, I can't even react to people like I want to. Uh, uh, I don't know what this just came out of. And the backlash I'm receiving is really the residue of something that took place before I got there. They didn't mean anything, but if I allow something to get in my heart, then I've got an issue to get out. I, I can't forget that lesson. Uh, one of our ministers that, that had moved on elsewhere um, sat with us in the pulpit. And someone in the audience reminded them of someone from many years ago. And they disliked that person from many years ago. And because that person favored the one that they knew many years ago, they developed an anger against that person. They were never in relationship with him, but they just reminded them of that person from long ago. So two years after this anger built up, God was able to break that anger down. And they went to the person and said, you know, for two years, I despised you. And the person was shocked. And he said, you despise me? Yes, because you remind me of someone from back there. 
but I want you to know it's all well now. And the person said, well, thank you very much. And it took them two years to forgive her. Y'all don't hear me. And sometimes when we let stuff, stuff settle in our mind and in our spirit, we'll have a reaction that will do us more harm than it will the other. So God commands us to forgive. But when we don't obey, we're going to suffer. So that was four years of suffering. Two years of being angry with you and two years of you being angry with me. What a waste. What a waste. And we'll be deteriorated from the inside. How can we expect the Holy Spirit to, and you fasting and praying saying, use me for your glory. And you got something festering on the inside. I had a catastrophe this week. I love tangerines. There were some tangerines in the bottom of the fridge that was hidden under some other stuff. And oh, she ain't here today for me to roll my eyes at her. Sister Sanctified. I like to go through the refrigerator and sanctify it every now and then. She took my tangerines and threw them in the garbage. So while I'm standing there growing taller and taller, as I huff and puff, she holds them up and it's green on the bottom. I said, how'd you do that? She said, it was in here too long. I said, I didn't know it was there. Why are you throwing out? And old bright light wants to say, are you going to eat it now? Turning the green side toward me. And of course not. But it stayed in there and it festered. When God tells you to forgive, and you don't forgive, it just festered in your spirit. And she wants to, and then she goes and gets this Ajax and puts bleach in the water and all this other stuff. I said, Dave, what are you doing laundry in the refrigerator? No, I'm cleaning it out. I'm cleaning, remember the lady right next? I'm cleaning it out. And she goes through and sanctifies the refrigerator. Even smells clean when she's finished. Ah, uh, there's a lot more space in there. But she took all that stuff that was no good out. You know what some of us need to do? Find ourselves at the altar. Hmm? We used to sing a song when I was a youngster, Search Me, Lord. And if you find anything that shouldn't be, get a hefty bag out and straighten me. Throw that stuff out of your heart. Don't, get, don't wait for an explanation. Don't wait for an apology. Y'all all right? Yes. It keeps the facial expression change. Throw it out. Come to the altar. Amen. Empty it before the Lord. Open my heart. Cleanse me, O oh Lord. Purge me. Purge me. Purge me. Clean me. Obedience to little things can lead to something great. I want to go back to our text. He said, go ye into the village over against you in the which at the at your entering, ye shall find a coat tie. First of all, understand, when we do pause to hear direction and instruction from God, we'll find out God is quite specific and quite concise. If we took the time, I don't want to go later in the chapter because I might be here till tomorrow night, but, but, but you'll find as soon as they entered the door, the coat was right there. When God directs us, when God leads us, it's quite precise. It was just like he said. They obeyed him and loosed it. 
And sure enough, why do you lose it? It seems like what God says is not going to be enough. Didn't it ever seem like it didn't have enough? Did it ever seem like? But when you obey Him, the blessing is right there. And they said, the master has made it. Oh, okay. Just like that? Just like, just like that? Just like he said. I wonder that those disciples that were sent on this mission knew what great thing was about to happen. I mean, it's not just going to get a zip car, hop in, drive and pay later. It's not calling her Splash and Plastic or calling Avis or somebody else. And they went to rent a car, but they went and got a coat that never a man had ridden on. What's so special about that? How about hundreds of years before Zachariah prophesied that? would take place in the ninth chapter and in the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He's just and having salvation. He's coming lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt the foal of an ass. Just as Zachariah described, here God has you living in a day where evil is all around us. But as you obey his every command, you're fulfilling what he promised would come to pass. You're a light shining in darkness. When you're doing it for his glory, and you're doing it for his honor, when you're doing it in obedience to him, he's going to let it shine. You don't know who, you don't know how, you don't know what, but the Holy Spirit can take your obedience and amplify it in the one that stands in darkness. You remind them, of something their grandmother said. You remind them of something your granddad said. You remind them of something you read, of a song they heard sang. The Holy Spirit will use every little obedience. Ooh. I'm hearing God talk to us. Y'all are sitting there kind of quiet. We learned that while we were reading through Proverbs, things that God spoke about our lives. Did anybody journal? Don't raise your hand. Anything that God spoke to you specifically? Did you take note of any portion of that scripture that spoke to your life? I wonder what an obedience to a little thing like that would open up. Would God feel because you could hear and follow instruction, he could trust you with more? <laughs> What's he teaching you? 10% of little is not much, but when God asks you for that, I wonder, are you being trained to possess more? You feel you're training, you got to repeat it. <laughs> so you don't get a raise. You don't get an increase. Take and learn how to obey where you are. When you learn how to obey, then you're trained and prepared for something larger, and something larger, and something larger. My, my folks used to hound me about cleaning my room. I had attitude because when we moved, my room was smaller than it had ever been before. I got a closet bigger than that room was. 
I had such a horrible attitude. I finally conquered keeping that room clean because I didn't like being detained. I had to serve detention. I wanted to go play ball, not until your room was clean. I was supposed to clean it yesterday. This is a new day. Yeah, but the room still ain't clean. So, no ball. So we had to conquer that. And one day in conversation, my grandma said, when he gets his own place, you're not going to be able to put nothing down. He's going to keep that so spotless, he'll make you sick. Sure enough, I got my own one-room apartment. No, not one bedroom, one room apartment. It was so lean in there, I made Kool-Aid to put next to the water bottle so I could have color in the refrigerator. I mean, you know, had a had an old reused chair, leather chair, that had and they didn't have fancy duct tape back then. And and but it was clean. I got a little coverall to put over the cuts and the snags in the leather because it had to look right. I had a had a, a, a sofa that turned into a bed. Y'all know what's up. And in my one room, and it was that uh, it was mine, and I kept it. I learned how to finally get that one room right, so when I got my one room apartment, huh? And some of us don't like where we are, and we want something bigger, but if you can't keep what you got, what you gonna do when you get something? Uh, okay, okay, okay. So, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding this is what God wants to add to us. When we're wise, we'll be able to enjoy and experience the, wisdom, the, the blessing of our wisdom, the blessing of our understanding, and the blessing of our knowledge. I remember when I couldn't rent a credit card, huh? But when I learned how to manage the credit card, Folk want to send me credit cards out of the, I just got a letter out of the day. We are doubling your credit limit. I said, oh yeah, and I'm gonna still keep a zero balance. Nah, 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 nah. Cause I, I like zero balance. Uh, when, when I called to make my payments over the phone, they said, oh no, your payments are only this. I said, I know, but I'm striving for a zero balance. But take, take that money off that account, and I'm coming back. And they, and they want to increase. They want to send me another car. No problem. Send me the car. I know how to keep it without using it. Hello. Thank you. Well, well you got a car. Why don't you use it? That's what the little girl said to her mom in the store the other day. Mom, buy me this. I don't have the money. Well, use plastic, mom. Use plastic. The one, the, the one you use when you don't have money, but you want it. <laughs> and some of us, you, you use it because you see something you want. But do you stop to think, how soon will I be able to pay this? It's on sale, but at 26% interest, how much more is that going to be than if I wait until I get the money? And then they tell you, but we'll be out of this stock. Yeah, but you'll come out with one that you think is better. That's why you're going out of this. If it was so good, you'd keep making it over and over. Thank you, I'll wait for the new one. I don't have the money now. In other words, wisdom and in this. Amen. What is God setting you up for? What does he intend to use you for? What have you walked into already? Had you not obeyed then, you wouldn't receive now. Uh, let's ask Abraham if obeying God will bring a blessing or not. It appears no matter how old you are, just obey God. It appears how medically impossible a blessing might seem, just obey God. No matter who else believes it. When I look at his wife Sarah laughing when she hears the heavenly being tell him, next year this time, you're going to have Oh, come on. 
and his darling wife starts laughing. You know what? Sometimes you gotta believe if you gotta believe God for yourself. If you've got to believe God by yourself, no matter who is against you, just believe God. Just believe God. The, the, the Hebrew boys were not shaken. Nehemiah was not shaken. The enemy is right there, wants to block him, wants to stop him. All he has is a letter from a faraway king saying he could be where he was doing what he did. He kept doing what he did. And somehow, in a miraculously short period of time, he completed a task that was expected to have been so much longer, but he stayed obedient to the command of God. Now, when you say the word obey, the lesson that Saul learned comes up. But that's a lesson on disobedience. And I, that's an altogether different sermon. <laughs> I could stand here and teach just as long about what happens when you disobey. But what I'm trying to tell you is, if I obey, if I obey, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Your parents don't know how to explain it. They know what's good for you. Sometimes they don't want to tell you because they were victims of disobeying the same thing they're telling you. But guess what? You're born of their bone and flesh of their flesh. They know why they tell you what and what you have to do. So we're hearing about kids that experience a catastrophe. Mom says don't go in that water. Mom says stay in the path. Kids wander off on their own. Animals come dragging them off. They get lost for days. I was on my ski boat, and he went out venturing into the water. And the two became separated one from another. And a helicopter had to rescue him just in time. I see some of these people playing this Pokemon game falling into a hole and walking out to I'm driving to New York City with my wife. If you're a driver from New Jersey and you venture into New York City, you know the traffic patterns are just a little bit different. And there are a few more people on the streets of Manhattan than there are on the streets of Irvington. And I wanted to lower the window and holler, thou nut as they walk across the street against the light, texting on the phone. I don't know if they were Pokemon or texting, and I wanted to knock them into the wild of yonder. But even though I had the light, they had the right because they were a pedestrian. And when I stop and tell people to go ahead, they're almost in a state of shock, really? Because they're not used to cars doing that. But when you don't obey, you will pay. Obeying God can lead to something great. I believe I'm in the midst of a great people. You're in the house of God. Many of you have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and you've believed in him. You've repented of sin and came to him with a broken and a contrite spirit knowing that you need God in your life. You accepted him as your savior. Hey, buddy, please let me persuade you to let him not only be your savior, but to be the Lord of your life. Yes. Learn to acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. I like it when I go to one of those new stores where you ask, where's such and such? And the helper says, come, I'll show you. Because when they send me to aisle 23, huh? It's not there. They just off a few hours. 17, he says, well, they're close. 
and it's on the left hand side if you're coming from the other direction. But when you show me where it is, guess what? God has already visited our tomorrow. And he came back to tell us, follow me, and I'll lead you into the path that you should go. So if you don't have Christ, you need to take Christ on board. If you have Christ, Lord, help me to obey your smallest voice. You know something? It takes time to learn the voice of your parents. And as you speak to him daily and read his word, you'll learn the voice of God. Before I ask you to stand, before I ask you to pray with me, I want you to hear something. If you do the right thing for the wrong reason, you're blowing. If you do what you desire instead of listening to his instruction, you're blowing. Who wants to go through all that and no benefit from it? As we stand, God has to get the glory out of our life. All that we do, we need to do it for him. No matter how great, no matter how small the task, we want to complete it because God said do it. We want to be it because God said be it.